again and welcome back to uh, part two of gradient removals. For those of you that followed part one, I'd just like to point out that when I was showing you how to use the gradient tool and we went up here and selected the gradient tool, I pointed you to the second one along which was foreground to transparent. Um, although that wouldn't have done any harm, it's the other one, the first one that would have been more useful, foreground to background because we were choosing the foreground and the background colours with the eyedropper. But I guess you could experiment with both of those ones if you wanted to. Anyway, that was the last tutorial. Um, so if you haven't looked at that one, go back and look at that one. And then this one here, there's another way that you can get rid of gradients and that's the one I want to show you now. So working with the dumbbell nebula picture that we had before, and this horrible black gradient that we've got here, uh, we're going to now uh, use a different method, which is the inverted layer mask to get rid of it. Okay, to do that, what I've done is I've duplicated my background copy here by dragging it down to the little uh, new layer icon. And then uh, what we're going to do now is create a uh, white layer mask in here by simply clicking on the add layer mask icon down here that looks like a little circle in a box. So I'm going to click on that and that brings up our new layer, layer mask there, the white one. And then what we want to do is we'll go back to background and click on that again and then we're going to do some keyboard pressing. So we're going to press first control A, that will select it. And then we're going to compress control C and that will copy it. Then we're going to go back to the top layer and we're going to click right on the little white box, the layer mask, but we're going to be pressing the Alt key as we do it. So we're holding down the Alt key and press and that will select just that white layer mask. Now we're going to press control uh, V will paste the background image in and then lastly we're going to press Control i which will invert that image and then um, because whenever we're, we're using a Photoshop and we're using uh, black and white always remember that white reveals and black conceals so anything that's black here is going to conceal and protect what's beneath it so what we're going to do now is going to go up to uh, image adjustment and levels and we're going to drag the black slider in the levels box right down and this will bring back the black which will cover and protect our nebula back there and then we'll bring up the white slider at the far end bring that in and that will start turning everything around it a nice white color now you can you can do this twice you can do it once and then do it again so you could start off with that amount, but I'm just for demonstration purposes I'm just going to bring it right up so we've got rid of all of it. I advise you to just do it in stages but we'll do it like that. So the nebula is protected and the stars are protected because they're black and everything else is going to be uh, cleared away so we'll say OK to that uh, and then we're going to click the um, image next to the mask in the top layer which brings back to that and nothing has changed yet simply because we haven't changed the blending mode if we go up here to the blending mode, mode, mode box where it says normal and we'll change that to soft light there you can see the effect that has um, personally I don't really like this effect very much it's a bit harsh so we go up to opacity and we bring down the opacity just to dim that out a little bit. Like that. You could also use uh, a blending mode called screen, mm, which is not very nice. And you can also use hard light, which is mm, okay. A little tip here if you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse and you highlight box here by clicking on it and it's highlighted and then all you've got to do is turn your scroll wheel and it will just flick through all the different blending modes. It's quite uh, fun to do that just to sort of see what they all look like as you go through them but we're going to stick with soft light for most of the time and reduce the opac opacity down to about 50%. So let's
let's have a look what sort of effect that has made. So if we click off the uh, layer visibility eye there. So that's our first picture. And uh, then with it applied, that's the sort of effect you get there. So that's another way uh, that people get rid of gradients. You could do it a couple of times. You could also do what we did in the first um, tutorial on gradient removal and use the gradient, uh, the gradient tool over here as well. Another thing you could do if it's only a small area and you want to improve it, um, again, all you have to do is go and get your lasso tool <coughs> and then, I don't know, supposing this corner here was the bit that had the gradient on and you just want to get rid of that, and all you do is flick the gradient tool over it to select that area and then go up to select and modify and feather, you feather it by about 30% and then you could go to image adjustments and you could either use brightness and contrast levels or curves I would just use brightness and contrast and then just bring the brightness down bring the contrast up and nothing is happening and you're going, why is nothing happening? the reason that nothing has happened is because they cancel that we're working on this with uh, layer mask on it. So what we need to do is to merge that down and then when we work on this section by drawing image adjustment brightness and contrast you can see that we can start to change it. And sometimes like I said just just doing it like this very simple selecting it and feathering it with the lasso tool and just moving that down. So I can make it as dark as I want. And, and often when you've got little small areas, that's quite a good way of doing it. As long as you put a 30% feathering radius on it, sometimes I go 60, um, you can bring that down quite well. Uh, and that's another quick way of getting rid of gradients. You'll find that you'll combine different methods. I mean, there's, there's many different ways of doing it, but I'm just showing you what I hope are the most useful ones to get rid of gradients. You know, I'm going to cancel that. So there we go, that's another way of getting rid of um, the evil gradients and hopefully you found that helpful. In part 3 of gradient removal I'll look at yet another method and hopefully when you've got parts 1, 2 and 3 all together in your astrophotography toolkit you'll be able to deal with those nasty gradients and get rid of them. So uh, hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next